ResaCalc is a web-based application for individual component design, which provides engineers with an easy-to-use interface that allows for full control over inputs such as geometry and loading, in addition to graphical and numerical results, including robust detailed reports. In this video, we'll take a look at the wall footing design functionality in ResaCalc. So to start, we could go up into our components dialog here and we would go ahead and add our wall footing. Before we go ahead and define individual properties of this particular wall footing, I'm gonna go ahead and look at the global project settings. And so we can see here that we have the option to change our concrete foundation code if we wish. So ACI and CSA codes available here. Next in the concrete tab, we can see that we have the ability to manipulate the foundation rebar grade. We also can change the coefficient of friction and have some other uh, input options if we so choose. Finally, if we go ahead and look at the units tab, we can easily switch between imperial and metric units. And we can also go ahead and define any of these different unit types uh, for our particular project. I'm not gonna make any changes here, so I'm just gonna go ahead and click okay. And now in our general properties, we can begin by looking at the geometric properties of the wall and the footing. So I'm going to start by defining a length of 15 feet for this wall. We'll keep the height the same, but I'm going to go ahead and define a wall thickness of 16 inches. Next, because we can use the graphical interface to our advantage, I can go ahead and select on the dimension here. So select the dimension for the thickness and then automatically change that in our properties. We can also do the same thing for the length of the heel. Let's make that two feet. If we need to, we could change our wall material between concrete and masonry. We could also go ahead and set our material type for the wall or the footing. Next, we can go to the soil tab, and here we could define the soil height, the soil density, as well as the subgrade modulus and allowable bearing, which both are important for the calculation of our bearing capacity. Next, let's go ahead and look at the reinforcement tab. And so we begin by looking at the wall reinforcement details. So we can choose the location of the rebar being at each face or at a single layer of reinforcement. We can also define cover, both interior and exterior. We can then define the horizontal, vertical, interior and exterior reinforcement. And so in this case, I'm going to match the horizontal reinforcement with, uh, with the exterior and vertical. So I'm going to make these all number six bars. And we can go ahead and leave the spacing uh, minimum and maximum the same for these two sets of bars. Now, when we switch to footing, we could either switch to the tab or I could go ahead and select one of these footing rebar options and it's automatically going to switch the tab and jump me right into that selection. So in this case, you know, we could leave the longitudinal bars the same. Uh, we can set the min and max uh, bar size for top and bottom bars. So maybe we make these, keep these at number sixes. We can also choose whether our footing reinforcement should be a single layer at each face again and then uh, manipulate the cover if we so choose. Finally, once we have all our general properties, soil conditions, reinforcement defined, we can go ahead and define some loads. Now, if I click add loads here, these are all distributed loads. So all these loads are applied on a per foot basis. So in our case, we're doing kips per linear foot. Also, the positive magnitude denotes a downward force. Finally, we can also add both vertical and horizontal out of plane loads uh, to these wall footings. No seismic or wind loads can be added uh, since we're assuming that the wall footings are gravity only elements. So we can go ahead and start adding some loads here. So I'll first add a vertical dead load, let's say 1.75 kips per linear foot. Next, I'm gonna go ahead and add a vertical live load. And in this case, let's say 1.25 kips per linear foot. I'll also add a vertical, let's say, snow load. And let's say that's going to be one kip per linear foot. And then I want to add a horizontal out of plane load. So let's put that in the live load category. Let's make that horizontal. And we can go ahead and say that's uh, 0.75 kips per linear foot. Now, while we've been adding our distributed loads here, the application has been automatically creating load combinations for us. So we can see all those load combinations here. We could go ahead and also click on the gear icon and we can see all of the load combinations that are available in this particular code. We could also change the code if we uh, need to. We can also see what's serviceability and also what safety factor we're using for those serviceability codes. Now with everything defined, I'm gonna go ahead and click solve. And we'll see that we get a code check as well as a governing load combination here and as well as our detailed report. So I'm gonna go ahead and expand our detailed report. Now here we have the basic properties that we defined previously. 
We also have our distributed loads applied and our load combinations. Next, one of my favorite features is we have our loading diagrams and our wall force diagrams. And so we can see these based on the governing load combination or any load combination that we want. And so we can see how these loading uh, change based on the loading at the wall, as well as the loading from the soil and the loading uh, that constitutes the bearing capacity. Those also, uh, changing the load combination also updates these wall force diagrams, so they coincide with what we're looking at for the footing. Next, as we dive into the detailed calculations a little bit, we can go ahead and look at, say, the shear details here. So we're getting a unity check for those shear details. We can look at something like the footing design for the bottom bar for the moment capacity. Also look at our overturning calculations. So we can see our overturning calculation due to that uh, load applied. Similar to our overturning calculation, we can see our sliding force, again, with that safety factor that we defined in our load combinations. And then we can see our soil bearing check. So based on the loads that we saw in that footing diagram above, this soil bearing check is done per that controlling load combination. Finally, looking at our rebar diagram, just seeing exactly how the rebar is being defined and, and uh, designed based on the criteria that we set previously. Now, when we're ready, we could go ahead and download this. So the download detailed report gives us the option to select more components just than just the component that we're working with. So we could select all of the components in the application that are active in the project or just our wall footing. Within a wall footing, we could also select to include all the uh, different uh, groupings or different uh, sections, or we could go ahead and, and kind of minimize the report and just include the calculations and the properties, for instance. When we do this, when we click done, we would download this to a PDF and be able to open it in a software, for instance, like Bluebeam, in order to compile our documentation for the project and share design information with colleagues. For more information about RISA Calc, including functionality and pricing, please visit risa.com.